Hi, Mandy. It's great to see you. Hi, Charlotte. Good to meet you. So my first question for you. Why do you do your specialist work? Um, well, it's a bit of a funny story. I, I'm an agriculturalist by background, um, being a farmer's daughter, and I initially trained to be an animal nutritionist and worked in the feed industry. Um, and I was aware of the fact that I needed a change and needed a new challenge. And there was a new job advert on the wall um, that seemed interesting. And so I went to speak to the people that were involved. And whilst I didn't get that job, I ended up um, taking on the role of a quality manager within a new division that was being set up, uh, specialising in animal welfare inspection. Um, it was supposed to be a three month secondment, um, but 20 years later, I was <laughs> still there. <laughs> <laughs> Bit more permanent then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And um, who's driving business sustainability in your location and within your specialist area? So one one of the um, oddities about animal welfare is that it isn't really mentioned in any of the um, sustainable development goals. So although it's obvious to most people that it plays a key role in sustainability, um, animals themselves aren't mentioned in many of the goals and animal welfare definitely isn't. But we know that to have truly sustainable livestock um, farming, we need to consider animal welfare. Um, and some recent research that was presented at a webinar that I attended showed that stakeholders believe that there was a direct correlation between animal welfare and sustainability goals. Um, in at least four of the goals, which were number three, good health and well-being, which I guess is obvious, uh, 12, responsible consumption and production, and then the easy ones, life below water for all our aquaculture and life on land for, for all our animals. So that's really where we're trying to drive. There has been talk about setting up a new SDG just for animal welfare, um, but the reality is we need to interweave it into all of the ones that are already within the framework. And what are the opportunities and challenges in the marketplace? I see um, the sustainable development goal number 12, responsible consumption and production, as being the main area where animal welfare can have the biggest impact. There's no doubt in my mind that we do need to consume less meat, which is sourced from higher welfare systems. But this does mean that we will need to spend more on an individual portion size but perhaps maintaining the overall balance by purchasing less of any of those materials. And what are your clients asking for in sustainability? Oh, many of my clients really get caught up in the animal welfare campaigns, um, making commitments um, because they know their peers um, are, are making those commitments as well and also perhaps to quieten down the noise that they're getting from um, animal activist groups or, or NGOs. Um, so that would be things like um, better chicken crate free, gestation crate free. Um, but these commitments alone don't really provide us with a framework to improve animal welfare across all of our supply chains. In isolation, they can actually seem at odds with some of the other sustainability commitments um, as carbon footprints often go up um, if we provide more space for animals and they grow more slowly. Um, and this is why animal welfare needs to be incorporated into the business's ESG framework with common goals um, and outcomes um, so that it's all meshed uh, together and, and doesn't sit as, as something separate. Yeah. And do people really understand ESG and your specialism? <laughs> no, sadly not. <laughs> um, um, there's still a huge disconnect in med um, many Western countries between the consumer and the farming community. And if we're going to really find any substantial 
sustainable solutions. We need to understand each other's challenges um, and work together uh, to find those solutions. And um, in terms of consumers or shoppers, how is the need for sustainability um, influencing their habits? Well, obviously, as you can imagine right now, across all the aspects of, of sustainability, um, the cost of living crisis um, isn't making it easy. Um, consumers want to do the right thing, um, but they see um, what they do see is that there's rising costs. So buying a higher welfare product would have an impact um, even um, if, if it is, a, is an option. Um, and it's really a big balancing act, um, but to have the biggest impact, uh, what I think is we really need to take some of that choice away. So many of the supermarkets will have very different tiers of animal welfare on their shelves, leaving you as the consumer to decide which one you can afford to, yeah. to choose. Um, but actually, if food production system is to be sustainable, farmers need to be paid fairly. Um, these costs need to be passed on to the consumer. And actually, if you removed that choice, because animal welfare is so important, um, you, you wouldn't have to make that social decision yourself. You don't go into a supermarket and decide whether to buy something that might have slave labour in it or not, yeah. um, or, or might um, have food safety issues and really the same needs to happen to, to animal welfare. This this is good enough um, and we all buy into that um, construct. But obviously probably what we need to do to because of that is to reduce the consumption so that we can afford um, that more expensive meat in the first place. Yeah. And how is food production changing with the focus on uh, sustainability? Sorry. So the, the big buzzword, um, as you're probably aware, will be regenerative agriculture and everybody wants to, to know how to do that. I even had a client asking me about it when predominantly what they're buying is chicken. And, and to me, regenerative agriculture is more about crops and cereals um, and livestock um, ruminant farming than it is against the, the intensive animals like pigs and poultry or, or aquaculture. So what we really want to do is make sure that we have more traditional farming methods, less emphasis on monocultures, so we don't have acres and acres of um, the same crop being planted and we don't have massive great big feedlots of, of cattle, but we actually have multi-species crops so that a farmer is getting their cash crops throughout the year rather yeah. than relying solely on will all the lambs get to fat before Easter and will I get that market place um, they won't be so dependent on those individual things they'll have multiple things which make their business far more sustainable and resilient to impacts that any one or other will have um, but as I say, I don't see that being the solution for pig and poultry. Um, but what we do need to do in those areas if, is de-intensify some of those systems, make sure that we've got some really good stockmanship skills there um, so that we can incorporate modern technology and good farming practice and, and build that, that um, sustainable business, which gives us good animal welfare at the same time. And how should companies start their plan for animal welfare sustainability? Um, the, the first part is to determine what sorts of animal products that you have across your business and why you use them. Um, and obviously the easy thing is, you know, I, I, I'm a food business, I have meat products, those are my, my animal products. But actually what I would encourage companies to do is look across their whole business. Um, yes. So for somebody like hotel chains, there's likely to be uh, products of animal origin, perhaps in their bedding. They might have goose or um, feathers in their um, uh, duvets um, or they might have woolen soft furnishings. Um, and 
somewhere like a restaurant, some of the posh restaurants. One of the trends at the moment is to have all your menus bound in leather, um, which again comes from an, an animal. Or, you know, they've got um, uh, posh suits for, for all their, their waitering staff. Um, and, and the same is true even in a retailer. So if you go into a, a big supermarket, you think about the food, but then they've got their cafe, they've got their staff canteen, they might have a clothes um, section as well. So to start with, think about all of that. Um, and the one thing that most businesses forget about is their company cars. So if they still have company cars and any of those have got leather trims, you might not yeah. even be a food business, but you actually might need an animal welfare policy. Okay. Um, so what we want to think about is why do we use these products? Um, could there be alternatives? Does it fit with what our um, mission is? What's the ethos of the business? So either create or find alternative materials or create alternative recipes. So if you just have a few um, bakery goods with eggs in them, maybe the easiest thing is to reinvent um, those recipes and take the eggs away. And then yeah. that's one problem solved. And then you can focus on, you know, your chicken or your pork products. Um, and find out where they come from, get back to your supply chain um, and start to see where all the different risk factors are, depending on where you're buying from. Um, and what pitfalls should these companies be aware of? I, I guess the most important thing is not to overcomplicate things. Um, so I always believe that it's better to start small and dream big um, because nothing happens from from inaction so if we if we sit here waiting for everything to be in line we could be waiting a long time and lots yeah. of more animals because have suffered by then so what we want to do is do lots of little steps um, and even if you aspire to really great things it would be better to have um, stepping stones on the way so that you can show what your progress is and I think that's one of the most important things is to have a plan and be honest again about reporting your progress against that plan and if the plan goes wrong because there's a war in Ukraine because of the cost of living crisis you can redevelop that plan but if yeah. you keep if you keep showing your stakeholders your investors and your consumers that the plan is still real and you haven't lost sight of it. I think that's the the most important thing um, for for people to do.